Finally, an updated helmet standard, ECE 22.06. Is this now the best helmet stand available for everyday riders? Let's find out. First, let's cover the basics. The bad news, helmet standards are based on old research from decades ago. The good news, they still do a reasonable job of protecting our brains. Even cheap helmets using antiquated standards like DOT are about 80% effective. The key, of course, is to try and get as close to 100% as possible. Let's have a quick look at the three main existing standards. DOT is the US standard, developed in 1974. It's a real dinosaur. SNELL is another US standard, but certification is voluntary only. It came under criticism in 2005 for being too based on car racing helmet design, which could increase the chances of brain injury or death for motorbike riders because the helmet was too stiff. Snell denied this but did make updates in this regard. Then there's the European standard 22.05 used in more than 50 countries worldwide. Many saw this as the best of an antiquated bunch because it was based on a huge helmet study back in 1996 called COST 327. The problem? We have learned so much more about head injuries since then and yet the standards have barely changed. I believe there are five major areas that really need to change with helmet design. Protection from medium impacts, not just high level impacts. A big problem with current standards is they are based on protecting us only from near lethal impacts, 250 to 300 G forces but you can still get a brain injury from much lower impacts. Many manufacturers now use technology such as dual or variable density liners to address this. Rotational impacts. In many crashes, the helmet strikes a surface at an oblique angle. The sudden rotation of the head can cause severe brain injuries. Some helmet manufacturers now use technology such as MIPS to reduce these rotational forces. Chin bar padding. While some standards test the strength of the chin bar on full face helmets, there is no requirement for actual padding, which can help to reduce injury to the jaw and teeth. A major study showed it's the most common point of impact for road riders. Why isn't it a major focus for helmet standards? Removable cheek pads. Many manufacturers have started to incorporate this. In a serious accident, it allows paramedics to take the helmet off much more easily. It costs next to nothing to include in the helmet design. I think it should be a standard feature rust proof brackets. We have been shocked in recent years at how brands like Liat, Aero and Suomi have had chin strap failures due to rusted brackets breaking, usually due to inferior materials or shoddy anti-rust coatings over cheap steel. We have read all the fine print of the major helmet standards and cannot find anything about corrosion resistance. Okay, let's see how this updated European standard goes. Protection from medium impact? Yes, the new standard now tests at low and high impacts. They also test this to more parts of the helmet and with impacts that are direct, angled and against curb shaped objects. Rotational impacts? Yes, impacts are also tested at a 45 degree angle against a steel anvil. Chin bar padding. While the chin bar itself is impact tested, there are no requirements to add padding which might reduce injuries to the teeth or jaw. Sadly, none of the helmet standards seem to address this as far as I can see. Removable cheek pads. This is not a requirement or even a recommendation. None of the other standards appear to demand this either. Rust proof brackets. Unfortunately, this is not covered in the European standard. I can't find it in the other ones either. It has allowed brands like Aero, Liat and Suomi to use poor quality materials and have strap failures within the first few years of use. This oversight badly needs to be addressed.
The updated European standard also includes some nice extras. Modular helmets with flip up chin bars are now impact tested with the chin bar in various positions. Official accessories such as sun visors and intercom systems will also be included in safety testing. Visors are tested by being shot at with a steel ball. Sun shields must be movable separately from the visor and cannot restrain or prevent movement of the visor. And reflective stickers will be put on helmets or come included with instructions for nighttime visibility. A great idea. Our conclusion? We think the new European standard will arguably be the best of the major standards available for everyday riders. As helmets come out with this standard, it will be well worth considering when you buy. While it still has some shortcomings, it's definitely a good move in the right direction. Remember guys, we were only looking at the major helmet standards. There are also others like Sharp and FIM to consider. And if watching this on YouTube, remember to check our pinned first comment for any further updates. As always, we are keen to hear your thoughts. Let us know in the comments.